John chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 2. The Bible says this. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already been, had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Verse 9, and immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. Today I want to speak for just a few moments on the topic of stirred waters and stirred hearts. And you may be seated today. Stirred waters and stirred hearts. You know, it's amazing how just a few words can change everything. It's amazing how just a few words can not only change everything, but just a few words can alter our perspective on things. Just the power of words. Just a couple words can change the whole perspective and how just a few words either added or removed from a statement can change what that statement is declaring entirely. Stick with me for a moment. I want them to put up on that slide that statement. Now, this statement, it says something so close. It's very self-explanatory. It's very clear. And for all of us, when we read this statement, the image is made clear. Now, I want you to put up the next one. Same statement, but just a few words added to that statement changes the context of what's being said entirely. So close tells us a picture, and it shows us that we're very close to the very thing of whatever that scenario is. So cl- we're so close. We're so close. But you add a few words to that, so close, yet so far, well, that changes everything. That changes everything. It, it changes the perspective entirely. It changes what's being spoken. Many times there's perspectives, and they can be both looking at the same scenario and possibly both be true depending on who it's coming from. We could look at one thing and say, that's so close, but the person next to you could look at that and say, that's so close, but yet so far. Somebody could look at something and say, well, that's very true. That statement is true. Some of us do that on Sunday to Sunday when we hear the preaching. We say, you know what? That was a good word, and there was truth to it. Maybe somebody else could say, well, yeah, there was truth to it, but let's be realistic. Was it really that true? Different, the same topic, the same statement, the same, we could be looking at the very same object, but different perspectives show different points. It all comes down to the perspective. What is so close to one person can very well be so close yet so far to another. Have you ever looked at a scenario and seen that was what was so close to one was so close yet so far for another? It's the power of perspective. You see, here we find Jesus coming to a pool in which Hebrew is called Bethesda, Now, Bethesda means this in Hebrew. It means the house of mercy. We find Jesus coming to a place where mercy would be found. And the Bible describes that this being the place where a multitude of sick people of many different things, they they were blind, some were sick in body, some were lame, some were paralyzed. They all had tremendous needs, and they all gathered around this pool because they knew that this was where miracles happened. They were all there because they had a need 
in specific. Now, the need varied. The need was different according to everyone. But nonetheless, all of them were there for the same purpose. They had something inside that needed to be met. They were looking for a healing. They were looking for a touch. They were looking for a miracle. John 5 tells us that at a certain time, an angel would come down and stir up the water that it was a certain time that this would happen. And once the waters were stirred, then upon the waters, whoever would step in first after the waters being stirred would be made well. Now, when you read that at glance and you read that we're first, you know, just when I read the word of God, I look at it very practical sometimes. I, I have to, I got to look at it and say, so, so what my first reaction when I would read this portion of scripture, I would say, well, that sounds like a very interesting thing right there. That sounds like, um, you know, I don't know, I don't want to talk light of it, but that sounds like, you know, serious action happening there. So you're telling me the waters are stirred and the first person in gets the healing? That sounds like there's a lot of movement there. That sounds like everyone's there for the same thing, and when the doors are open, whoever gets in first gets the healing. That sounds like there's a lot of action taking place there. It might get aggressive there. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of things that can happen. Put yourself in their shoes. If you get in first, you get the healing. See, that's no problem. I'm going to get in there. Any means necessary. I, I will get what I need to get. Can you imagine that type of atmosphere? You're just waiting for the waters to be stirred. So the Bible says that that's what would happen. The, 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 the waters would be stirred and whoever made it in first would be made well. But Jesus comes and the Bible says that there was a certain man that was there. And this certain man, he had an infirmity for 38 years upon his life. 38 years. Now, some of us, we read past that verse. He said, okay, and you were on to the next verse. 38 years is a long time. 38 years is a long time to be in need. 38 years is a long time to, be in a, to have a drastic need. 38 years is a long time to have a desperation type of need. 38 years is a long time. Some of us, we go through trials because we have difficulties for a week, a month. Some of us said it's been a long year. Can you imagine 38 years? This man had an infirmity for 38 years. Years. And the Bible says that Jesus walked into the scene and he sees this man and he knew how long he had that infirmity. So it showed on him how long he's been there. It showed that he wasn't new to the poolside. It showed that he's been there for some time. In other words, it showed that he may have got comfortable there. He said, if I'm going to be here, I might as well be here. He probably seen other people come and join the poolside. He probably seen others come throughout the years. 38 years, he probably seen a lot with that infirmity. But the Bible says he, he seen this man and he took notice. And it shows us that there was a severity of the need that he had. But he wasn't alone. There was people that would gather around with one very thing in common. They were all in need of a miracle. They were all in need of a touch. They were all going through something. They were all dealing with something upon their body. It may have varied. It may have looked different. It may have had a different degree of severity. But nonetheless, they were all there together in need of what happened. We see that the people would gather around and wait for the miracle. And reading this text and seeing the encounter of Jesus and this certain man, it shows a clear picture for you and I. It shows us that although all had a similar desire, all had a drastic need, not all of them had the same perspective. Though they were all there for the very same reason, not all of them seen things through the same scope. Some seen themselves as so close, but others seen themselves as so close yet so far. I believe we can see the perspectives that some had by this encounter, and we could take away some things that I want to give you today. The first one is this. We can see that some waited and some anticipated. Some were waiting, but some were anticipating. There's a difference. You see, there lay a great multitude waiting for the moving of the water. They were waiting for those waters to be stirred. The moving of the water wasn't an ordinary time, but it was a divine time. It was a time when miracles were released. They were waiting for the opportune time when, when the miracles would start to happen, when the, the waters would be stirred, when, when the miracles were at hand. They were there waiting for that very moment. Now, it's in the times of the stirring of the waters that you will see some were waiting 
but some were anticipating. To wait is to do this. To wait is to stand by. To wait is to hold back. To wait is to bide one's time. But to anticipate, hear the contrast in this, it's to expect. It's to foresee. It's to think likely. It's to prophesy or be prepared for. Whole different contrast. To wait and to anticipate. Are, is there any people in the, in the house that just don't like waiting? Just I don't like it. If the line's too long, I'll come back later. Usually for those that don't like waiting, and you go into different settings or you go into a waiting room, what they'll tell you is, okay, well, we'll be with you in a moment. Go ahead and have a seat. And some say, you know what, I'm not going to fall for that seat trick because if I sit down, that means it's going to be a while. So I know some of you may be like me, no, I'll stand. It's okay. Because we show that I want to expedite this thing. I got stuff to do. I, I got to get in there. I got to get in there, and I want to get out of here. I, I, I would rather not take a seat. I'll stand. I'm, I'm comfortable standing. Thank you. Some of us know that. Some of you, you even go through a drive through and they tell you, okay, we'll have your food momentarily. If you can just pull right over to the park. No, I'll wait right here for it. It's okay. <laughs> Some of you learned that hack on TikTok. You said, if I go over there, they're going to take long. But if I wait here, they can't deny me. I'm going to get what I need. There's a line if you can put aside. No, 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 I'm okay. I'll wait right here. Thank you. Because we're anticipating. You say, I don't want to wait for it. I want to get what's on demand for me now. Some of us don't like waiting. Some of us, you know, we don't like being on standby. Some of us, we use every option that's given to us just to not wait on a call, just to not wait in the lobby. Some of us love the new feature. I love it. It says, you can wait on the line or we can call you back. You'll be out in the sink. You say, go ahead and call me back when you're ready. I'm ready when you are. I'd rather not keep my phone on this server. We, we just don't like the waiting factor. But you know what's amazing to me is how we see waiting as such an inconvenience in everything in the natural, but how some of us take the posture of waiting when it comes to the things of the supernatural. How some of us don't desire to take a seat when it comes to a waiting room, but we have no problem taking a bed when it comes to the waiting room and the things of God. We, we take that posture so simple. We take the posture of waiting rather than anticipating. You see, to anticipate means that we're expecting, we're foreseeing, we're thinking likely, we're prepared for it. We're not just waiting on it, we're prepared for when it comes. Because we know it's going to happen. We know the miracle's coming. We know that it's in due season. We know that it's here. And we believe it for what it is. So we don't just wait for it to happen, but we anticipate it. When you wait, you walk a certain way, but when you anticipate, you have a certain stride to your step because you know it's coming your way. You know it has to happen. You know it will happen. It's just a matter of time. I'm not waiting. I'm anticipating. We get a certain spirit to us. We anticipate what God will do. I believe in the seasons of the miraculous. We must not just wait as if God might do but we must anticipate as if God will do it. Can you imagine if you started to walk through your day-to-day life, if you started to walk through your week, not if God does it, it will happen, but when God does it, it's going to happen. Can you imagine how you will start to filter the thought life that you have from Monday to Saturday, coming in on a Sunday, if you have the posture saying, I'm not just waiting for it to happen, but God, I know it will happen. So this week, I choose not just to wait on things. I choose to anticipate its arrival. Because when I'm anticipating an arrival, I can't wait for it to get here. I'm waiting on it to get here. I'm anticipating what I need from you because I know it's on its way. Some of us, we need to get that type of spirit within us when it comes to the things of God. We need to get as excited from the, as the alerts from heaven as we get excited from the alerts from Amazon. Some of us need to get just as excited when it comes to our daily Bible reading as when we get that blessed email that says, your package is on the way. Have you ever talked to an Amazonaholic? Have you ever talked to somebody that wasn't expecting a package? Hey, are you home? No, why? Because I got something coming my way. Can you be there at the right time? Can you receive it for me? I want to make sure it's not damaged. I want to make sure it's not mishandled. I want to make sure it's there upon my arrival. I won't be there, but can you get your hands on it for me? 
hey, you want to meet us here? I can't be there. I'm expecting a package. I got to be there upon arrival. I got to sign this thing. I got to be there in person. I I got somewhere to be. I got something coming my way. Can you imagine if you started to walk on your journey with God like you had something coming your way and said, I I got an opportune time with Jesus. I I got Jesus. It's coming my way. I'm expecting something. I'm anticipating something. I got something arriving with my name on it. I'll get it for you. You can't get it for me. I got to sign this thing because it's for me. Can you imagine what would happen if we weren't just waiting for something, but we were anticipating it? I came with the word from the Lord for some of you today. Your blessing's on its way. Your, your, Your healing's on its way. It's all right. I'll, take to the, I'll talk to the ones full of faith. Your, your breakthrough is on its way. Your family member getting saved on its way. That, that, that miracle that you've been praying for, you've been travailing for, you've been broken over, you, you, you've been laying hands on, it, it's on its way. It, it's not a waiting season. It's an anticipating season. When it comes my way, I'll be ready for it because God is anticipating. I'm anticipating its arrival. I want to talk to some anticipators today. If you want to keep waiting, join the waiting room. You can go wait over there. I I, I want some anticipators around me that say, I've been waiting long enough. I've been on standby long enough. I've been on this dial tone long enough. I'm tired of the waiting room music. I'm tired of hearing that sad too. I'm tired of just waiting on standby. I'm going to step in anticipating so when it comes, I can do my due diligence on receiving it. Some of us need to stop waiting and start anticipating. You see, we see here that there was different types of people surrounding that pool. When you're anticipating, you live a certain way. You you, you have a certain confidence to you that everything may not be good, but it's going to be good. Everything may not be perfect, but it's going to work out. It may seem a little rocky right now. The ships may be sailing a little through some windy seas. The seas may be roaring, but I trust the word of the Lord. I I trust that God said it to me and and God's going to bring it to me. You you, you hear a certain type of verbiage that comes out of somebody that knows their God. Psalms 27, 13 says this, I remain confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In other words, the psalmist said, I came with confidence that I'm not just going to experience it in heaven. I'm going to experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm going to experience it on earth. I'm going to experience it here. I'm confident in it. Micah 7, 7 in the Amplified says this, but as for me, I will look expectantly for the Lord and with confidence in him. I will keep watch. I will wait with confident expectation for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. You know what these, what the writers of these verses knew? They knew that nobody could do it for them. They spoke for themselves. They said, I can't speak for you, but I'll remain confident in this. I can't speak for you, but as for me, I'm confident in my God. I'm confident that it will happen. I look expectantly for the Lord and with confidence. There's nothing like a confident man and a confident woman. Confidence speaks. Confidence carries a a persona with them. Confidence has a way of just commanding a room. Can you imagine if the church would begin to walk confident in what God said? No, no, no. God spoke it over me, and I wait expecting what God said is going to happen. Number two, we see this, that some positioned themselves and some postured themselves. Some were there by the poolside and they were positioned. However, there were others that were there and they were postured. All of the people were in the same place. All of the people were in the same ability. All of the people were in the same. They they were all by the pool, which shows that they were all positioned in place. They were all positioned in place for the miracle. However, the nature of this creative miracle, it didn't rely on positioning alone. It relied on the posture of the individual. This was a creative miracle. This was a unique one that that spoke to not just where they were, but those that were ready for the stirring of the water. You know what it was speaking to? It wasn't speaking to positioning. It was speaking to the posturing of it. 
It was speaking to not just those that will be by the poolside, but those that were ready to jump in. It was speaking to those that would not just go to, to hang out by the poolside, but those that had every intention of getting their miracle there. It spoke to those that would not just go and attend where God would show up and the miracles would show up, but those that had intention of receiving theirs. I applaud you today and I commend you because we've all positioned ourselves in the right place today. We all came to the house of God. You all drove your way to 6675 Hollywood Boulevard. And for some of us, that's a win of the week. I'll give you that. I I thank God that you showed up to church today. I thank God that you got the presence of God in your system today. And you came into the house of God and you're hearing the word of God. You're positioned in the right place. But I want to tell you today that if you're expecting great things from God, if you're expecting miracles, it's more than just arriving in position, you have to be posture for it as well. It's more than just coming and hearing good words. It's having intention of hearing and responding to what God is saying. It's coming, it's more than just coming to attend and see what God is doing, but it's, it's coming with every intention on receiving it for yourself. It's coming positioning and saying, I hope the preacher is good today, but not just that way, but you're coming and saying, I can't wait for God to speak to me today. It's coming and saying not just what am I going to eat after service, but man, I can't wait for the meal that the Holy Spirit's cooking up in the house of God. I I came to get something today. I came to get a word today. I came to get filled up today. There's a lot of devils that have been knocking on my door during the week. I need the Holy Spirit to fill me up today. I need the power of God on my life. I came with every intention, not just to watch and be a standby, but, but I came to participate and get what I need. I come on a Sunday morning to get what I need. I don't just come positioned, I come posture. God, what are you speaking into my life? What areas do I need to change in? God, I got to grow. I want to be the best husband I can be. I want to be the best father I can be. I want to be the best friend I can be. I want to be the best coworker I can be. God, help me to change. I'm postured unto you. I, I, I don't want to just be in the right place. I want to get what you've intended for me to get. It speaks to not just the positioning, but the posture. It was whoever stepped in first that would receive the miracle they'd been waiting on. This shows me that it wasn't just positioning alone. You see, something had to happen on the inside of the individual. Something had to change on the inside of the person that was there on the pool side. There had to be a shift within the individual that if they were going to be not just positioned, but postured, they had to come to terms with themselves and say, when the waters are stirred, I will not miss my moment. There's nothing more sobering in life. There's nothing that will teach us a lesson greater than missed opportunities. Have you ever missed an opportunity? Have you ever missed a good opportunity? Answer within yourself, but have you ever missed a God opportunity? There's nothing more sobering to our personal lives when we miss opportunities and have to settle with the reality of what could have been rather than what is. You see, something had to happen if the individual wanted to get their miracle when those waters were stirred. They had to have a I will not miss my moment type of attitude. They had to have a I will not miss my moment type of posture. You see, some of them were there for some time. This man was there for 38 years with an infirmity. 38 years living with the infirmity, and he was there by that poolside. And yet, though he was in the right place, he never got what he needed. And, and he had a different, excuse, different answer for why it wasn't happening. He had an excuse for every answer, and, and there was a lot of things. But he didn't have the posture that said, I will get my breakthrough. He didn't have the posture that said, I need my miracle. He didn't have the posture. But see, those that walked in, those that jumped in, those that experienced it, they had a certain type of posture that said, not when I get it, but I I will get it. I'm going to get what I need from God. I will walk through that window of opportunity. I will walk into the waters of miracles. I will get my breakthrough. I will get my miracle. I will get my healing. I will experience life and life more abundantly. I I will overcome. I will get my joy back. I will get my peace back. I will get fulfillment back. It's going to happen for me. It has to happen, God. I'm not just positioning, but I'm posturing myself. What do I got to change? What do I got to adjust? because I will get what I need. It has to happen. Some of us got to get a tenacity within us that it has to happen. 
There's no other options. I, I got to experience it. This miracle needs to hit my household. This breakthrough has to, I, I, I'm not going to go through another year dealing with this same issue. I'm not going to go through another year dealing with this same frustration. No, 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 enough of that. I will get what God has intended for me. I'm not going to live a less than life. I'm going to live life and life more abundantly. My God is too big. He, he's too great. He's been too good to me for me to settle for less. I want God's best for my life. God has every intention for us to live a blessed life to live a fulfilled life, to live a life in the supernatural, to live a powerful life, a power-filled life. Not walking with our head down, not walking anxiously, not walking depressed, not walking and just seeing whatever happens, happens, and, and taking whatever comes and saying, well, you know, whatever happens. No, 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 no. We, we have to walk with expectation postured that we will receive what God has for us. You see, when those waters were moved in that pool, and when those waters are moved, we have to have that, that, that tenacity that says, I will be where I need to get to because I'm not just positioned in place, but I'm postured. You see, what I see within the Bible is whenever there was creative miracles, it all depended and hinged on the movement of the individual. Whenever what God would move in an unordinary way or in a very specific way, like this is a very specific miracle. It was a very unique type of miracle and there was another miracle that was similar to it. You see that in 2 Samuel, there was an account that there, were, there was the army that needed God to go before them. And the Bible said in 2 Samuel 5, 24, and let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry tree. In other words, when things start moving, when heaven starts moving some things around, when things start getting interrupted, when things start shaking a little bit, when, when our day starts getting interrupted, you know what some of us, Everything that starts to knock against us, we start to rebuke. Sometimes heaven will disrupt some things in our life. Sometimes if we don't give God our attention, he'll get our attention. If we can't get it from God, he'll give it to you. He'll bring it to us. Some of us, sometimes things will start to knock against us. Things will start to move. Things will start to shake. And, and it may be that in those times, that shaking is not from the enemy. It may be from heaven because it's preparing you saying, hey, I'm about to move some things around. I'm, I'm about to, to shake some things around. I, I'm moving the ordinary. I, I'm shaking up your, your natural routine. I'm shaking up your normal week to week. I'm going to start to make you uncomfortable. I'm start to move some things around you. Some of you here under the sound of my voice, you've been been feeling different. You've been feeling like, man, something's happening. I, I don't know. I don't feel myself lately. I don't know. I feel like I got it. Like, I don't know. Something needs to happen. Something needs to change. And, and you've been looking at all these different things, but maybe it's heaven trying to get your attention and say, hey, that very thing you've been praying for, I'm trying to ready you. So I'm trying to break you out of your routine. I'm, I'm trying to break you out of your normal week to week because I got something for you, but you got to be ready for it. You, you know what it said in 2 Samuel? The Bible said that when you hear the, the moving of the trees, it said, bestir thyself. I love the King James translation of it. It said, bestir thyself. In other words, you got to get yourself moving. You, you, you got to be ready for it. You got to be stirred for it because when that miracle hits that house, if you're going to get what you need to get, it's going to be because you're ready to receive everything that God had intended for you. And I want to tell you here today, church, we're in a time where God is stirring the waters of this church. He's stirring the trees with the winds from heaven. In other words, we're in creative miracle time. That's why we're sitting in Hollywood today. That's why you're here in Hollywood Boulevard. Not because this is normal stuff. This is creative miracles. This is supernatural type of stuff that you walked across the, the Hollywood Walk of Fame today to enter the house of God. Why? Because heaven's been stirring the waters for third wave Hollywood. And some of you walked in today saying, hey, I got a need as well. I, I got a miracle. I need too. This is a good time to stir yourself because God's moving some things around. It said, be stir thyself. Get yourself stirred for what God is going to do. No one can motivate you to your miracle. You got to want it. You, you got to want it. No, nobody can make you get it. Nobody can make you get that blessing. Nobody can make you get that breakthrough. That has to be a desire that comes from you as an individual, you for your household. And that makes the difference. And, and point three, see, some seen and some experienced. Some seen, but some experienced. 
You know what I said to myself this year, walking into this new year? I said, I don't want to be a bystander and see everything happen. God, I want to experience these things for myself. Now, I'm, I, I love to, to clap for others, and I love to, to be happy for others. I'm not speaking against that, but God, I want to experience some things this year. I don't want to just be a spectator, but I want to be a participator. God, I don't want to just be on the other side of the window looking in at all that's happening. God, I want to be in the room when the Holy Spirit shows up. I want to be in the room when the breakthroughs are released. I want to be in the room when the miraculous starts to happen. I want to be in the room when your favor starts to flow and you start to bless abundantly. God, I want to be in the room because I'm positioning myself. I'm posturing myself. I'm doing what I, I, I'm stirring myself to do my part. That's why in this season, we got to do what we can and believe God for what we can. But we got to do what we can. That's why some of us, we got to finish our Heart for Hollywood pledge because that's what we can do. We got to keep giving because that's what we can do. We got to keep showing up for prayer because that's what we can do. We got to keep attending the church house service after service because that's what we can do. We got to keep coming to events that we have. We got to come tonight for team night and be a part of the ministry fair because we can serve. We got giftings. We can give our part. We can do what we can do and believe God for what we can't do. But God, when you do what you can do, I want you to find me doing everything that I could do, God. I I'm going to give everything I can. I I'm going to do all I can. I'm going to believe with great faith and expect great things and attempt great things because I'm going to see that. I don't want to just see it. I want to experience it. I want to walk in that. I want that to be my reality. I don't want circumstance to pull me down to its reality. I, I want to see my own reality through your view. I want to see it through your word. I want to experience it for myself. Jesus asked this man with an infirmity for 38 years. He asked him a question. Jesus, seeing him in his condition, he asked him, he said, do you want to be made well? What a question. Do you want to be made well? For some, we read that and say, well, that is the most obvious question question that Jesus could have asked that man. Who wouldn't? But Jesus deemed it necessary to ask him. And I think it's because some, they've been in a state for so long, they don't even see being made whole as needed anymore. They begin comfortable with living in the circumstances that they're experiencing. They no longer have a strive to experience life and life more abundantly. they just grown content with experiencing life. They no longer strive to experience the joy of the Lord that is their strength. They just live from circumstance to circumstance and look at survival as a win. They just look at life as just another day and just I'm going to do what I'm going to do and I'm going to do my part and be the best I can be and that's it and have grown content with circumstance when Jesus had every intent to not just leave him in his condition, but really take him to a fullness and the wholeness and the complete healing that he wanted to give him. I think he asked him for different reasonings. One, to see if it's even what he desired. Because when Jesus puts his hands to bring a healing, Jesus doesn't do a patch job. He does the whole work. You know what I've seen in the house sometimes is that some people don't want God to come through. They just want God to see them through certain things. They, they, they don't want all that comes. In other words, when God gives us a miracle, there's some demands upon that miracle. We have to do our part post-miracle. All of us just want, some of us at times, we just want the need to be met. When God looks past the need, he wants to see destiny fulfilled. He says, I don't want you to just break through. I, I want to see you get to heaven and take everyone I have predestined you to take with you. I'm not just looking at meeting the need of a utility bill or paying your bills. I, I, I want to give you wealth that money can't even give you. I want to give you wealth of knowledge and, and wealth that's going to sustain generations after you because you raise them in the things of God. I don't want to just meet a need. I want to give you principles to live by that you can experience true blessings and experience blessings that overflow unto others. I don't want to just meet a need. I want to meet your destiny. I want to fulfill everything. I want to give you all that I can give you. Some of us, we just look for quick fixes. When God doesn't work with quick fixes, God does a complete job. 
He, he doesn't want to just patch it. He wants to do the inside out. He wants to give us everything he intended for. So he asks this man, do you want this healing? Is this what you want? Do you want to be made well? And the Bible says that he experienced the fullness of it because he came to that place of wanting to experience it for himself. I want you to stand with me today. Some seen, some experienced. Today I believe that we have an opportunity to define with ourselves what it is that we want to experience within our own lives. We are in a time where God is releasing miracles in this house. A time where God has just opened up an opportunity for us to fulfill his will and accomplish the task at hand. But in that, in this beautiful vision, in this beautiful promise, there's room for you and I to experience that within our own personal life. To not just be a part of what God is doing, but to be in the work, to experience it, to, to not just see it, but to live it out. And today we have an opportunity to declare within ourselves that this will not just be an ordinary year where I just see things happen, where I'm just blown from, from season to season, whatever life deals with, whatever life hands out. No, no, no. We have to posture ourselves this year. Ready ourselves. Bestir yourself. Have an anticipation. Get your anticipation back again. Get it back again. It's on its way. It's en route. I don't know what you need today, but God knows. And today could be the very day where we come to God with new faith and believe God, not just for what's in front of us, but greater. Say, God, I'm believing that, man. I'm going to experience all that you have intended for me. God, I'm not just going to barely make it through this life day to day, but I'm going to experience your blessings, life and life more abundantly. I, I believe it. God wants to bless this house that his people could look different. They, they can have that glow to them again, that, that pep in their step, that, that, that something where people around you in your, in, your, in your job or in your community or in your family say, man, whatever it is that you got, I need some of that because you got something to you, man. That type, of, that type of favor that flows from you that man can never give you, it's just God gives you because you're walking in anticipation. That type of joy that's sustained, that's made new every morning, that's not dictated by circumstance. Some of us were up and down on a roller coaster of life and, and we could see it because you don't just have show it on your face. You show it on your Instagram. And you show it on your TikTok. Everybody knows when things are going good and they know when things are going bad. We're just up and we're down and we're up and down. No, no, no. I think God wants to bring stability. Some of us just living a life where we go through life. Life happens. Everyone has life situations. Some things that you can't even blame the devil. It's just life. It's life. Life has a way. But even when life has a way, man, God always makes a way. For those that anticipate, those that live life saying, God, I'm expecting, I'm anticipating. Things are going to get better. I'm above and not below. I'm the head and not the tail, God. I lift my head high. I lift my eyes to the hills from which my help comes from. Today's a good day to lift your eyes back to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, that we say, Jesus, I look to you because I want your way. I want your blessings. I want your favor. I want your hand on my family. I, I want you to breathe on my life. I want you to breathe on my marriage, to breathe on my finances. I want God results, not just good results. I want God favor, not just good favor. I want everything you have intended for me that I may experience it and not just see it, but experience it as a reality. That's what God desires for us. Can you lift your hands for a moment all over this place? Thank you, Jesus.